Okay, you guys, so I'm reading Genesis chapter 9. I'm trying to get some word in. And um, this is a very small nugget. It's nothing extreme, but I figured I would share it because I like how the Father just gives me understanding of the word. There's a lot of stuff I genuinely don't understand. <laughs> when I'm reading something, I want to learn like from the foundation up. So um, there's even just little stuff that frustrates me. Like I kind of feel like the Bible was written backwards because you know how you have the Torah, the first five books, you know, it's like it's explaining the process and the culture and the religion of our ancestors and stuff, but it doesn't tell you what these things are. Like how in the beginning it just tells you that when Noah or when Noah, when he got off the ark or the box, because it wasn't a boat, when he got out of it, he just immediately built an altar, you know, and he made sacrifices unto Yahuwah. Well, what is an altar? You know, like, I know what an altar is, but it's just frustrating. Like, I wish the Father would have at least, you know, given us some type of definition. Because, you know, when you're reading, you know, you're creating images in your mind. So, we know what an altar is, obviously. But it's just, if somebody didn't know what an altar was, and they're just reading Genesis, you know, trying to read the Bible from the beginning. I'm reading this, and this is just me. I'm reading, like, okay, so what is an altar? What does it do? What, what does that mean? He just got off the boat. Like, where did he get the stuff from to, to build an altar? Like, of course, we can put two and two together. He obviously found something to build the altar with, but it doesn't explain to you what the purpose in an altar is. Maybe not until you get into, like, later on in the Torah, maybe through the other books, but I just have a little pet peeves like that, so... As much as we know, until I get there, an altar is a uh, a meeting space between um, Elohim and man. And I mean Elohim in plural, meaning it could be any god. You know, this is where the divine, the spiritual, and man meet. And I guess where covenants and agreements are made so things can manifest in the earth. So um, we don't have any information of what they were made of, how they built them the purpose and the it's just all that good stuff maybe not until you get later in the book but anyway that was my first frustration my second frustration is there is no definition for blessed anywhere in the bible like if the bible doesn't really tell you at least in genesis i don't want to speak ahead of myself it's probably in here somewhere but i'm starting all over okay it does not really tell you the definition of blessed or how god blesses people it just says oh he blessed them Okay, what does that mean? Like, if I'm somebody who doesn't know anything about religion, what does that mean he blessed them? So, I'm just going to read verse 1. Literally, this video is going to be short and just give what he gave to me. Because I was taking notes on a audio recording. <sighs> so, this is Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. And Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth that's it <laughs> so I was putting two and two together and of, of course it's the father who gave me the understanding but you know I went to Beletta Bible and I you know went to blessed and saw what blessed said in the Hebrew and the Greek and it, it literally gives you no definition it just says like to kneel to bow down to praise to salute you know things like that I'm like well that doesn't make sense contextually you know father did not kneel down Noah like he didn't he blessed him so, what I did was, I said, since there's no real definition of how he went about blessing them specifically in different situations. So now, at you know, after this, every time you read that he blessed somebody in the Bible, you really don't know how he did it. So I was like, well, let's just go with, you know, what, what was produced or what came after he blessed these people. And it says that uh, after he blessed Noah and his sons, he said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So I was like, okay, maybe the way he blessed Noah and his family in this context, or how he blessed us generally as humanity, is giving us the tools, the capabilities, basically everything you would need to actually carry out and to fulfill whatever that commandment was. And that's actually very powerful because, you know, we have our own idea of what a blessing is. Like, you know, we know the basis of a blessing. Anytime something good happens, <laughs> you know, oh, it came from God. We always give the glory back to, you know, Elohim for anything good that happens. And that's true. That that does, you know, that's where blessings derive from. That is a type of blessing. But 
I feel like he wants us to pay more specific attention so we know how to he kind of tells us in the word what a definition of a blessing is by what comes after it once he blesses somebody so like I was saying in this case he commanded Noah and his sons basically all of humanity to be fruitful to multiply and to replenish the earth that came after he blessed them so the blessing must be him giving them the tools and the capabilities whether that was physically scientifically basically I gave you everything that you needed this came from me uh, the romance you know the um, the emotionalism everything that you need in order to carry out this commandment is considered a blessing from me in other words you can't even be fruitful you cannot even procreate you can't even you know Viagra can't help you but you cannot even get it up to fulfill what I just told you to do unless that capability came from me so that's the blessing so before he even commands you to do something, he already has it in his heart. He already has it, you know, in the spirit, what it is that you are to do. The blessing is him giving you the capability to do those things. So that means we have a responsibility. Okay, so you can see this way in the beginning. And this is after Adam and Eve, of course. But dealing with Noah and his sons and, uh, you know, their wives and everything, they have a responsibility once we do get a blessing. So that means that when Elohim blesses you, there's a purpose behind it. <laughs> He's not just blessing you in vain. The blessing was, uh, take example for how we were made out of dirt. You know, Adam was just made out of dirt. The blessing was God putting his spirit and his life in him. Now, why did he put his spirit and his life in him? To do something with it, right? It wasn't just to make you a living soul or make you a living being so you can just go waltzing around the earth doing what you want to do. No. <laughs> The blessing was that I gave you life. And when I gave you this life, I gave you this life for a purpose. You're meant to do something with this life. You're meant to give it back to me. You're going to give back to me what I gave to you. They gave you the capability to even do what I required of you. And that is how you worship uh, Yahuwah through your lifestyle, through your life. <sighs> so yes. And Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth so they let you know that whatever this blessing was they now have everything they need in order to fulfill that commandment they have a responsibility now so already we see from the foundation of the bible our elohim god i don't want to say god i want to say elohim despite what you hear in church despite what you hear in religion despite what you hear around you when people tell you what a blessing is that may be true that yes that's true that every good thing that everybody has it does essentially come from yahuwah it is a blessing but what's missing the substance that's missing from a hebraic perspective is that there's purpose and there's something required and expected of us once we get a blessing he never gives a blessing in vain that's something that we can learn as kindergartners just by reading the beginning of the book by how he goes about blessing and why he blesses and what comes after he bless somebody so after he blessed them, he commanded them to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth. God's blessing or Elohim's blessing was supplying them everything they needed to fulfill that expectation that he had given to them. And that's something that I'm going to assume they understood. Okay, so our ancestors, you know, the Hebrew people ancient times ago they understood not only what blessing was but that when he does bless you there's a purpose behind it and there's something that he's expecting for you to yield back to him through that blessing so for example um obviously you know for the man if father is blessing noah to be fruitful and to multiply he gave him everything he needed <laughs> okay you have the ability to get aroused you have the ability to perform in order to be fruitful you know to plant the seed to make the baby and then you know that's the blessing and you notice anytime a woman in scripture has uh she gets pregnant or she's with child they immediately start blessing yahuwah Oh, you know, Yahuwah has given me a man child or he's given me a this and he's given me a that. Then they named the child after the circumstance, you know, so they acknowledge that this is a blessing from Yahuwah and following what's attached to a blessing from Yahuwah is the purpose in him giving you that child. 
So you understand that because he did bless you with this man child or this daughter that you are to yield that child, give it back to the father and a means of worship which I guess for us, unless he gives you specific instructions for that particular child, like it's Samson or Jesus or something, you know, we understand that we are to, because we're all a plant and we all are going to be harvested, that we are to raise that child in the, um, the laws and the commandments and the ways of the father so that that child could be used as a vessel of honor for his purpose in the right season and the appointed time when, when it's older. So, uh, it's an interesting perspective so that's what I got from it that's what he gave me just simply reading verse one because I got frustrated and I was like okay Lord well uh, you have to give us a definition of blessing because you know when you look it up it really does not tell you anything it doesn't tell you specifically what he did to bless somebody so you really don't even have a real definition of what it means to bless other than attributes and uh, certain, I guess, specific elements that come from him that he gives to man. That's, that's the best somebody can tell you, but they don't tell you why. There's always a purpose for that. And that's the most important element when it comes to our faith and the foundation of our faith. It's not just that God blesses you. It's not that it's just that we get blessings or everything good that happens to us for a blessing. What do you do with that blessing? What's the purpose in this gift? He doesn't give gifts just to give gifts in vain. He gave it to you to yield it back to him for a purpose. So this is what I meant when I said you can really learn his character and who he is as a person just by paying attention very, very closely to how he does things. You have to because this is a singular Elohim. He is an Elohim that's different from all the others in all these other religions. So you got to pay attention to how he does stuff. So that when somebody comes to us and they tell us what a blessing is, we can correct them and say, according to my Elohim, Yahuwah, okay, his blessings have a instruction manual inside of it. There is a purpose that is meant to be yielded back to him once we receive that blessing in order for it to glorify him. No, you just around here living and getting blessings and uh, you're not giving it back to him somehow. Um that's a robbery I truly believe that and I wouldn't be surprised if some curses follow you after uh, whether he does it now in this life or whether he does it when he comes to uh, collect you and uh, it's judgment time but because you didn't read the word and you didn't get that understanding that a blessing from Elohim is uh, giving you the capability and giving you all the things that you need your, your very breath your spirit your life your ability to do anything here as a human being it comes directly for him so literally you have him he creates this man and he breathes he blows life into him and then once the man is you know he's alert and he's looking at Elohim he receives his instruction you see so I didn't just give you life for nothing I gave you life for a purpose to serve me I want you to do something specific with this life and then once the man gets the instruction he obeys that instruction and he yields fruit back to Elohim and he gives him what what's required of him so um this is the purpose in life <laughs> this is this is why Ecclesiastes says you know um our very instruction here as human beings is to fear Elohim and obey his commandments now we all have our own specific manual you know for what we're supposed to do our destiny so thank God for that but <laughs> you know just in general that's what a blessing is OK, yes, it is something that comes from him. Yes, it is good things. You know, the father doesn't give you anything bad um, <laughs> unless you did something bad. But what's missing, the part that I feel has been taken out of our faith and our understanding of the Elohim that we serve is that blessing always has purpose attached to it. It has responsibility and there's always something that you have to give back once you get that blessing okay whether that's financial uh, children <laughs> you know uh, understanding wisdom the father's not going to give you wisdom and understanding of spiritual things if you're not going to be fruitful in that area somehow you're not giving it to other people you're not teaching other people with that you're not writing books you're not you know you're not spreading that knowledge you're just holding it all for yourself that's not what he gave you that for 
And if people understood that, they would be a lot more humble. That Father does not give blessings in vain. He doesn't give you something just for you. Anything he gives us is to be a blessing, you see, to somebody else. Always. Because it would not make sense if, oh, that's powerful. Thank you, Lord. It's not, it doesn't make sense for the Lord to bless you financially and make you rich, give you a nice home. But we just see that attached to blessing is to be fruitful and to multiply, right? So the question we should be asking is, because Father blessed me with this nice home, because Father blessed me with this nice car, because Father blessed me with this really good job and all this money, how can I multiply that? How can I be a blessing to somebody else? So everything that he's giving you is meant to be fruitful. It's meant to, to multiply whatever that blessing was. That's why he always compared... Um, I don't want to get the name wrong. Nebuchadnezzar. I forgot which one of the kings was, uh, was a tree in the dream. And when the dream was being interpreted, he was saying how father showed him as a big tree and everybody was given, you know, shelter and security by this tree um, and in a form of shade. So you see, because of his wealth and because of the status, the king was blessed. He misunderstood. I said this is going to be short, but it's the Holy Spirit's fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, uh, the king understood, you know, he, he, he didn't have any intention of uh, being fruitful or multiplying that blessing. He decided to honor himself and to make it all about himself and um, abuse his authority. And I think when Daniel told him, you know, that it's Yahuwah who raises up kings and brings down kings, nobody else. It has nothing to do with you. I did that. Once again, we learned that blessing comes from Yahuwah. And there was a purpose attached to that blessing, right? So we see that in that vision, the purpose in him being this powerful, mighty king and this wealthy king in this tree was to be fruitful, a fruitful tree and uh, um, multiplying by serving and providing a shelter for every other nation, for everybody else. So he disobeyed that. He didn't understand the purpose in him being blessed to be a king in the first place. And he got it stripped from him. So um, I'm thankful that the father, you know, gave that understanding to me in the very beginning of the book. So now when you read further, you know, when you read further along, when it comes to what a blessing is, you understand there's always purpose attached to that blessing. So, yeah, um, it, it doesn't make sense for the father to bless us, you know, tremendously to give us, a, a you know, wealth. It's and it's a lie that there are not wealthy uh, Christians. It's actually in the Bible that there are there are wealthy people. The Lord the Lord does allow people to be wealthy and rich. There's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. It's what you're doing with that wealth and whether you understand the purpose and what the Father wants you to do with that blessing. If He wants to use you to, um, you know, to serve as a, you know provision and shelter and make sure everybody else's mouths are fed or to feed the homeless. He's going to have to make somebody rich. You know, he could, he could choose whoever he wants to, you know, bless with those finances. But you understand your responsibility now that you have it right. It's not just for you. You know, that's not being fruitful. <laughs> that's you keeping it all for yourself. That's what God hates. He doesn't hate you being rich. He doesn't hate you being wealthy. He hates what you do with that wealth and those riches once he does bless you with it. You're robbing him of his increase. You're robbing him of his harvest with what he really wanted to do with that money when he gave it to you. There was probably millions of people he wanted to bless with that money and he made you the possessor of that wealth. And you robbed him of his harvest of all those people that were supposed to benefit from um, that you know, provision and you didn't give it to them. That's why the wicked and the elites and all these people with all this money are going to be judged heavily by Yahuwah. That's why. If you're asking, like, why does he have them rich in the first place? And I think it's just to make them accountable, to be honest. I think the father just does a lot of stuff. He allows people to have stuff just to test their hearts and see what they're going to do with that power. And um, once they are, you know, abusing that power for wickedness and they're just abusing other people with it. Now he has something to use against them in court. There's a lot of people that the father does not like, but he has to give them a grace period. This is in scripture. He has to give you a grace period. 
he has to give you a space of repentance. That's just something he has to do being righteous legally in his court. I really do believe that. But he may not like you personally. But at least I gave them time to correct it. They didn't correct it. And what happens is when we're sinning and we're not walking in his ways, that we're not repenting, our cup is being as a cup of judgment that's being filled up with all those accusations against you. And you already have a lawyer against you, honey, named Satan. That's the last thing you want is to stand in judgment before Yahuwah. And you have this this person over here with all of these sins and transgressions and things that you did that you never repented of. That's going to be poured out on you. So a lot of the stuff the Father allows is just to make people accountable. And he still uses them as vessels of dishonor. You know, he still uses these wealthy people for his purpose in many different ways. But they're not doing what he intended for the, what to be done with that money and those riches. And that's what people are going to be charged for. So, um, um, yeah. So, like I was saying in my recent vlog, um, I have the heart and the mind of Christ when it comes to our life. And I think that what's going to help us convert into having more of a, a heart like Christ is understanding that what a blessing is. Some of us just don't bear fruit of the Father's work as we just genuinely don't understand. But now that you understand what a blessing is, you know that anytime Father has blessed you with something, um, you are meant to be fruitful and to multiply that blessing. And um, it's always going to be for you to help somebody else too. Okay? So if, let's say, you know, Father gave you a nice home. Okay, don't be surprised if he has you take in somebody into that home. You have the necessary tools, right? You have the necessities. You got the money, you got the home, you got the car. If um if he ever in a season appointed somebody under your care, it would make sense, right? Because you actually have the necessary tools to take care of that person for that season. So it's not just for you. It's to be a blessing to somebody else. Okay? A lot of us are not um, can be a little tree to help somebody, and sometimes Father will make you know some of us a big tree, a big wealthy tree. If you thought that Father just wanted to make you wealthy just because he loved you and you pleased him so much, he may have done it for that reason. He will bless you for um for being an obedient child, but it's always going to be because that's just his heart and his character. He's humble. He shares. He's a big giver. It's common sense that it, I did give it to you because I love you and because you did please me, you know, just like he told Abraham, you know, um, you will be the giver and not the borrower. Basically, you'll have more than enough. You have so much, you'll be able to give it to somebody else. But it's common sense that that's going to come with blessing somebody with that wealth that he did give you because he loves you. So, so that is the definition of a blessing that I have learned in Genesis 9 so far. Since it doesn't tell you what a blessing is, we just have to assume that a blessing in essence is... Specific capabilities or things that derive from the Father himself, things that only he's able to do. It's like he puts that substance in you or he blesses you with that substance. He gives you that ability that you otherwise wouldn't have unless he basically injected it into you or put it into your life. This is why scripture says all good things come from him. You cannot do anything in and of yourself. If you a good runner, guess who gave that to you? <laughs> okay, you're a good cook. Guess who gave you that ability? You're naturally talented with music. You learn guitar really easily. You can sing amazingly. Guess who gave that to you? Well, you see how we already knew what a blessing was, but now that you understand the true definition biblically, there's a purpose in that. You don't have a gift of singing just to sing in the kitchen when you're cooking. You have that voice for a reason, and you need to give glory to God with that voice and bless other people with it. You know I love music so much. You know how many people can just be blessed by the sound of somebody's voice. I love Leah Janae's voice from uh, The Voice. I think it's the show she was on, The Voice. <laughs> Leah Janae, that girl is so young, but she has like a soulful, just deep, raspy, like you can feel the emotion. It's like she experienced what she sings about and she does covers of everybody else's songs. So the father knows that, you know, when he puts a, well, I don't want to say a muse because that's actually a pagan uh ideology about somebody being blessed with you know the gift of music or singing but these things come from him and it's just it's just amazing you know because people don't really understand the purpose in their blessing it's a gift you know it, it is life is a gift 
childhood is a gift and you know the ability to get pregnant that's a gift so there's a purpose attached to the gift when it comes from Yahuwah. I can't speak for any other God. I don't know what they do. I don't care what they do. I'm just saying, as far as what I'm reading, when he gives you a gift, he wants you to do something with it. You're meant to multiply that gift, be fruitful with that gift, and bless him with that gift. You can be a blessing to others through your voice. There's something about sound frequencies that I really do bal I really do believe just balance in certain parts of us on the inside that can give you peace. He knows that. So it's selfish and it's robbery for Father to bless you with a gift of song or singing and music or whatever your gift may be, you're not you're not sharing it with people that could actually need that. So yeah, so I mean, we can kind of create our own definition. The Bible gives us understanding of a blessing and what it is. But as for the actual definition, it depends on what the context is. So we just know that it is just something that comes from the Father. Just capabilities and powers that He essentially possesses, but He gives it to us as a gift. It doesn't come from us. We didn't even give ourselves life. He gave us the life. <laughs> so anything He gives you... Uh, as a byproduct of that it came from him and there's going to be his purpose what he wants to be done with it attached to that and not only will you be blessed through it but he wants you to bless other people through it too so that's it now you understand we have a responsibility that when father blesses you with anything in this life it is our responsibility to seek him on how he wants us to be fruitful in that gift and that blessing how he wants us to multiply in that gift and that blessing in a way that's going to glorify and to honor him. It does not matter how small it is. Everything comes from him, which is why scripture says we should always be thanking. We should always be praising. We should always be giving up, you know, a fruit of praise back to the father because it's kind of sad that, you know, we don't have the mind of Christ that thinks that all this stuff does come from him. But when you read that and you just kind of think about the message, you know, he just used me to give. It's like, wow, we have so much to just praise him for. Literally, he just kind of fleshed out <laughs> his own little his own little world, his own little matrix. And even us being alive and breathing and talking and fellowshipping and whatever else we do here is little sims, you know, little simulations. Uh it came from him and his essence and just his being and his power and his heart and his intentions and his aspirations and him even you know we talk we want to talk about oh my aspiration my goals does god put that in you depending on what it is not all of it okay <laughs> we don't live here to do our will we live here to do the father's will he puts his aspirations in us to flesh out what he wants us to do and we're we're blessed by that as a um as a result that's how that works we do stuff backwards here like no this is you were fleshed out for my purpose i gave you my life my breath my spirit to do my will and when you do that successfully in me and you don't sin in doing so you're blessed by the fruit that comes out of that and you're blessed by my presence that's what that's our reward for that but we're here to do his will he does it through us he puts his goals his desires his aspirations his will in us that's how that works so um yes that's what a blessing is anything that comes from the father as a gift to you for his purpose and we have to figure out what he wants us to do with that gift and uh yield him his fruit give back to him what he gave to you do not rob him i really do believe that there is a consequence for that and um I'm going to keep reading. I said this is going to be short. I intended for it to be short. He didn't intend for it to be short. So I hope that this has blessed y'all. And we can have an awesome conversation in the comment section about what blessing is to us. <laughs> so I will see y'all later.